morning, everybody. We got our bolts. Make sure I'm in frame. I think I am right here, but these are 5 sixteenths. We're going to open them up just a smidge. They're not 5 sixteenths, they're not quarter inch. It's some metric drill size that's nothing will fit. But 5 sixteenths is the closest, so we're going to open it up to that. We got our tap drill and our tap. We're going to tap at the 5 sixteenths, our plate, and then bolt this on there and uh, get after it. I'll spare y'all with the drilling and the tapping of this plate so we can go ahead and the video won't be an hour long to bore this out. Alright, I'll get on that. The way you figure your drill taps, like if you 5 sixteenths tap, just Google it. I mean, I got charts and stuff I do, but you can Google it and it'll tell you, you know, and then you can convert it to thousandths of an inch and check it with something like this. You can just uh, just convert it to thousandths of an inch and you can test it because most drill bits you can't read anyway. I can't anyway. Alright guys, I'm going to drill this out and uh, tap it for 5 sixteenths. We're going to open these holes up just a smidge where 5 sixteenths bolt will locate this pretty good. And then we'll put it, put it on the lathe and see, see how it goes. Right, guys, bolts are done. Some grade eights in there. Don't really need grade eights, but that's all I have. All right, I'm gonna change it out to the four jaw. Four jaw on there. Y'all see how that goes? Might as well. <clears throat> she just slides off like so. surfaces are clean and nothing in there that'll mess nothing up. Let me get the jaws flipped and get it in there and we'll indicate it see where we're at. See how good it, it did. Looking good so far. I ain't even indicated it in. I just stuck it in there and measured it on 32 seconds like we did last time and then got it closer this time. That's the only machine surface that we can uh, indicate off of because all in here is out of whack. So that's machined with that bore so it should be I, ne I really need something to reach in there and do it from the side but I don't have anything which may be an issue what we'll do is I'll indicate it in 
through here on this machine surface here and I'll kind of reach in there with something with the meat with the uh, indicator the best I can and see if it's running the same as this I'm pretty sure it is you know but it, it's in there this far before it starts getting you know smooth bore all this is rough but, um, let me get that indicated in let me see if I can make it worse right now Let's see so high right there. Took five out of it. Five thousandths, about six thousandths. All right, let's pick her high again. It's a high, right on in there. Tight, tight. Yeah, it's got us at four. It's kind of flat spot there. They're like it's something in the. Uh, Drops off to zero, starts going up there. Kind of in between these, that one, and that one. I know this is uh, time consuming, guys, but you have to do this stuff or it won't be right. I'm going to tighten it all the way around and see what we got. Okay, it's tight. weird it's got one spot it's okay all right let me get inside that bowl and see what, what it looks like we'll stick with that for just a second let's see if might as well just do it on camera try to get it in there anyway without wrecking my indicator it's not true in there though so I don't think this is gonna work can only get in there so far. need a best test to go in and grab the side of it but there's more than one way to skin a cat we indicated in perfectly on this machine surface here then we'll put our boring bar in there and we'll go in there to the back side and we'll rotate it by hand and see if we're mismatched you know skipping on one side not on the other and I uh, might have to do some fine tuning like that with the boring bar use it for a you know, a pointer. All right, I'm gonna get on it and I will uh, get back with y'all when I get it indicated in. All right, 
God, that monkey wood ain't got it in a half a thou. I'm gonna spin it up. Let's locate the chuck. You always know where your chuck is when you're messing with a lathe. Chuck's there. Uh, let's give it a spin and see what she's looking like. We're at uh, 600 RPM. it and see what it does. No thinking about it. All that work just to get this to mount up there, but it's like anything else. So when you paint a car or you build an engine, all the prep work is to make the job right and easy and it comes out correctly. So I'm thinking we're going to be cutting, I forgot what the measurements was, it's probably about 50,000 per side, 100,000, 110,000 side of that bottom. And um, I'll get the uh, board bar on there and shut my mouth and uh, get it set up, see what we can do here. I think it's going to work the pimp. And now that I got the jig built, if anybody wants theirs done, let's see how it runs on the Jeep before I go talking that. I think it's going to be just fine. We're also going to do some polishing on that uh, bore. I've already started on the throttle plate, getting it clean. But we'll polish it up where it doesn't stick to it and not have to clean it as much. Alright, let me uh, get the boring bar set up. Alright guys, first thing we want to do is set our depth of this boring bar. We don't want it uh, sticking out no further than it needs to be. So what I'm going to do is stick a measuring. I just stick a measure to take the uh, scale in there and see here. I'm just feeling the back side of that. About two and a half inches, which is what I guesstimated. 243. But what I'm going to do is just run it in there. Look at it. Run it all the way till it's touching. The tool uh, bit, the holder's touching. To make sure it ain't going to hit nothing. And see, we got interference right there. So we need to come out. Still hitting something. hitting that uh that interrupted cut in there I 
I don't know what y'all can see. You can usually see better than I ever think you can when I go in there and review the video. Okay, we got right there. Turn it slow, cause that damn valve on that, that idle air valve on that throttle body's been wanting to run into everything. Okay, let's bring it in until it touches barely. clearing everything there we're outside the bottom of the bore we're good on all this stuff that, that right there is one I mean the whole time I've been doing this that's been my pain but we're good there we got about 80 thousandths of clearance you know what I'm gonna turn the uh, compound I'm going to turn the compound at a 90 degree angle or zero on the scale. That way we ain't got to worry about bumping that right there if I get um, my brain gets out of whack and I forget about that. I don't want to crash onto that and mess up the whole deal. Alright, let me uh, do some adjusting here and we'll be back in a second. It's better to do all this now than to be worried about hitting it the whole time. Get that out of there. Okay. And this lined up a mark down here. That way we can also feed in with our compound. Got a mark under there. I'm just gonna double check and make sure I'm 90 degrees. Thirty-six. Thirty-six. Y'all didn't think I was just going to show you boring it out and let's go put it on the Jeep, did you? 56. When you build motors or, or uh, trannies or rear ends, front ends, whatever, you have to be this tedious with everything. If you don't, and this channel is about information, so if you don't take the time to do all this stuff, when you're doing your jobs on your front end or rear end that's the biggest problem I've seen with my buddies you know over the years working on their Jeeps is just throwing the shit in there and wondering why it don't last it's a problem and even I have it sometimes you know I don't take the time to get it perfect 
but on something like this you have to you have to take the time to make sure everything is the way it's supposed to be all right i'm gonna turn this back 90 degrees and um i'll show you how to do that i might as well Let's take the boring bar out there before we screw that up Set him right there. <coughs> I don't know if I was gonna ask you guys. I was gonna ask you guys. You know, the couple, two or three hundred that watch me do this type of stuff. Have y'all ever had? If any of y'all ever had this neck surgery that I had, because I'm having a hellacious problem with it, and I wanted to see if any of you guys have ever heard any of your buddies your family anybody that's had this surgery done I had uh, titanium plates put in my neck back yeah, it's been about 10 12 months now 11 months ago I'm not I don't really remember exactly the date I went back to the doctor you know several times with it and he's basically telling me that you know there's no damn way I can feel what I'm feeling but the problem I'm having is, is when I speak those metal plates, the screws in them or something is rubbing the back of my esophagus. And it's causing me to get a little whiny at times because the shit hurts. And uh, the more you talk and the louder you talk, the worse off it gets. Until I'm at the point now where I think I'm gonna have to go back in for surgery and get it all taken out. And it's right uh, on the back side of your esophagus where those plates are. I got two steel plates about, not steel, they're titanium. Can you see my fingers? About that long, one on top of the other, fusing my discs together. Now, they can take those out from what they told me. But the doctor don't seem like he wants to do it. He don't act like, it, you know, it's a problem. And he says, you know, there's no way you could feel that, but, you know, I ain't in the habit of just making shit up when I'm not talking about my Jeep anyway. But anyway, beside the point, um, it's bothering me pretty bad. I want to know if any of you guys have ever had that kind of surgery, and have you ever heard of, you know, people being able to, it rubbing the back of their esophagus and causing issues. It causes issues when we swallowing things and um speaking at work because i'm on the phone a lot at work you know answering questions and helping people out with uh problems with lifts and it's really starting to affect you know a lot of different things anyway not about throttle body just thought i'd ask y'all if any of you guys had ever run into that or had that surgery you know shoot me hit me up and let me know i mean i know you know you know your own body i can feel it in there it feels like it feels like a, and I looked at the hardware in the uh, doctor's office that we put in there, and there's washers on the screw. This is exaggerated, but there's washers on all the screws. There's six screws in each plate. Well, this the washers that they use on there are star washers. You know those star washers that have the little teeth all the way around it, and it's a. Um, tapered recess that they recess the screws down into the plate where it's flush but those washers curl up around it and lock it down and I swear that's what I'm feeling but if any of you guys ever heard of that or whatever let me know because I'm at this point I think they're gonna have to take it out but if it gets better it gets better if any of y'all heard of that or had that and it got better let me know anyway let's get back to making some Jeep power one more thing about the doctor. I got my little crescent wrench, but evidently the neurosurgeon that did my neck has never seen a pissed off redneck before. And uh if you act like a fool like I did, you know, because it's important to me, you know, you just it's important to all of us if you you can't talk, you know, if I can't talk comfortably I can't make videos. I can't work, you know, because the, all my guys that help me out, that I help out every day, 
you know, if I can't talk to him, I can't do my job. But anyway, evidently, he'd never seen a pissed off redneck before. What I'm doing is, I'm going to run the side of the tool post down here. Loosen this up. Let's see if y'all can see it. Yeah, I'm going to run it down here to this machine flat face. And make sure the tool post is 90 degrees. What do you think? See, I just did that by eyeball. And it's off. Just loosen it up, put it up down there, give her a snug, not nothing terrible, but now we're 90 degrees to the face of the throttle body. So when we go in there cutting on it, it'll be perfectly square, just makes the tool bit work like it's supposed to. Now we're coming back down this end. Little bit be on that side of it make sure it's squared up in your tool holder Get a... oh yeah well anyway back to the story on the doctor he said I know you think I'm full of shit in his native you know English the way he speaks I'm not gonna make fun of anybody but it was funny when he uh, realized I was pissed off. But anyway, he said, I think, I know you think I'm full of shit, is what he told me. Zach works. I know you think I'm full of shit, but it's impossible for you to be able to feel those screws in there rubbing on the back of your esophagus. You don't have any nerve endings there, is what he told me. I said, let me tell you something, you son of a bitch. I said, uh, I've heard in my life of people having their damn legs cut off and they still itch. So how in the hell can you sit there and tell me that I can't feel the damn screws? Now I'm getting pissed at this point because I don't like being called a liar and I'm not making this shit up. So, you know, give me some damn answers is all I'm asking for. But anyway, <laughs> he, he cussed at me, you know, and y'all know me. I'm not afraid to use bad language, and it's a problem I have actually, but you know, it is what it is. He tells me, well, if you're going to be cursing, we're going to have to end this conversation. Well, I looked at the old lady and I said, look at here, <laughs> you need to get me the hell out of here before I go to jail. It ain't going to be ending the conversation because I said a cuss word because he just had said one. He just didn't like what I was saying to him. So anyway, long story short, I showed my ass in there. Some of y'all would have been proud of me. But I can't, I can't stand that shit, man. You know, if I have a problem, if I do something at work and it causes a problem for one of my customers, I fix it. I paid this some bitch, well I did in the insurance company, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to do this damn surgery on my neck to hopefully make it better well, it's literally, it's made it better in one way, but worse in another. Lot. <laughs> but yeah, I had that old boy shaking in there. I don't know, I might be 43 and bum neck, but I don't take no shit off people. Especially if they sitting there calling me a damn liar. If you do that to me, you're going to have to deal with my ass. And, uh... I'm not shy to tell you such. It's crazy how them damn doctors are though. They act like you're a freaking idiot and you know. I've missed a lot of uh, What I'm doing back here is I'm getting this cutter dead center. I'm trying to get it best I can dead center by eyeballing this scale. It'll lean to the for it'll lean forward or back. I quit talking running my mouth. I'll probably figure it out. 
Anyway, long story short about the doctor deal, I'm not welcome back in that office. That's alright. There's more than one doctor in the world. <clears throat> What's funny is I went to a doctor. Uh, he sent me to a he sent me to a um, ear, nose, and throat doctor because he thought something was wrong with my vocal cords. <laughs> so they went there, and I think he was just doing this shit to, uh, you know, try to poke fun at me or. I don't know. He's trying to lay blame on somebody else. Something else is what he was doing. But anyway, the ear, nose, and throat doctor said, "Yeah, man, I can see it. I can see those plates bulged out into your esophagus." I said, "No shit. I can feel them bulged out in my esophagus." So I called the doctor back. The uh, this was before we got into it, which is why we got into it. I'm trying to justify why I showed my ass there, but you know, before. I went back to him, I called him, I said, hey, did you get the report from the near ear, nose, and throat? He said, yeah, I got it. Um, yeah, he says you can, he can see it bulging. I said, yeah, that's what I told you. He said, well, I want you to go get an MRI. Another MRI. So another, what, $1,000, $1,200, $1,500 for fucking deductible to go get that done. I go get that done. You there, baby? Yeah. Shit. All right. Anyway, I got it centered up. Anyway, he sent me to get the uh, MRI and went and paid the money to get that. And I get to his office and he pulls the MRI up and looks at it for two seconds and says, Yep, see there? I told you there wasn't nothing wrong. And I basically went off on him. Anyway, let's get at it. This is uh, tool bench sitting center. You know, with a scale, I don't have any other way to do it. It works every time for me like that. It might be a little bit below, just a tad. But I don't want to call that good. We'll go in there and uh, start taking some small cuts and see what we got. Alright guys, that's about the best I can get it lined up. Let's see here, we got a... Uh, Slow speed. It's feeding. I may have to change the direction. No, no directions of feeds good. Everything's clearing. Run it all the way up until it's. Stick my head in there. No, I'll make sure we're not gonna crash. All the way to the tool is almost touching it. Nothing's hitting. I got it in the lowest gear, it makes it hard to turn. But yeah, everything's clear and good. The way I got it set, there's no way we can crash. We would just hit the smooth surface of this in the front. But we're, well, we don't need to go in that far anyway. But I'm just saying that's we're clear. So I'll leave you all right there and see if this works. I'm just going to take a little cut first, real slow. Nothing, nothing too crazy. Let's actually slow the speed way down on the feed. Let's see how it goes. Y'all nervous? Because I am. Oh, that ain't, that's going to make it easier. Right? I'm going to look through the viewfinder and try to do this. You know what, I'm going to feed it out of the board. And that tool ain't designed to do that. Let's see if we're even touching that there. Zero. Let me establish zero and I'll put y'all back up here.
going to be a lot of that slow, easy going. I'll bring you back when I can get somewhere with it. All right, let's try it out. This is 20 thousandths. Let's see what it does. It's, it's got it's hard to see I need to get some app gauges in there and see what we got let me do that where we can be on target and not get get off the, the reservation here trying to make a video so let me get my snap gauges test it out see where we're at we're gonna match it to the 60 and then we're gonna mess with the front a little bit too but, uh, let me get y'all out of there you're stuck down in a hole in the lathe and and uh, I got, can't get in there I'll turn y'all back on when we get it going again you know what's funny about the doctor's situation is that they think that uh, they're so smart that you won't get sideways with them. But I will. Can't help it. Get back in here where we already cut. And uh, my measurements from yesterday, the big measurement was 2363. Let's recheck that. Let me write that down before I forget it. Two one. Two one twenty. We'll call it two one twenty. It's two twenty one. Two one twenty one. Got a long way to go to get what we got up here. This should be two three six.
263. Alright guys, I'm gonna take another cut out of there. this put it back a uh, angle on it clean that up too and then we'll put it back together Take her off and put her back together. See if it works. Or if it revs it idles at 2,000 RPMs. Well, that's the board. That's where we were at. Definitely 60 millimeter. Straight shot through. I'm happy with it. Polished up good. That's not without even using any metal polish. Probably put some metal polish on it and get it real shiny. But it's just a Jeep. If it was a race car, I did chamfer this edge too on the back side. All right, let's put it back together and clean it up and put it on the Jeep. Crank it up, see what it does. I gotta go get a gasket because I had to take that gasket off, but I'll locate one. I think that's gonna work, boys. Amazing how much of a mess you make when you're just doing something so little. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. That stuff there is so damn thin here lately. I don't know if it's Permatex brand. Let's try this gel stuff. That stuff there just don't seem to be. I got this gel kind too. Let's try that. We'll double it. Yeah, that seems to be better. Yeah. All right, let me put them in there. We'll be, we're getting close. Uh -huh. Next, next part of the video, be on the Jeep running. I lied again. I bratted the threads and used Loctite. So, if that ever comes out, that screw, if those screws ever get loose, you would think, oh, it's going to right in the engine. Well, sucking it in the engine would be 
not as bad as it's sticking it'll start sticking if you ever notice your throttle on any car with a carburetor fuel injection whatever and it wants to keep sticking at idle like half open a little bit idling real high you want to check that because if that butterfly moves any at all it will start sticking open just a little bit all right now i'm gonna put it on the jeep all right one more thing and then i promise i'm putting it on the jeep the next one i do or I'll maybe do it to this one if we can get the bolts back out after lock tightening but could take it bigger all the way through the bore now that i've studied it once i got it out see this adjustment here you could lay that butterfly on down flat and probably take it on out to about shoot there ain't no tellings man until you run out of metal right here that's that'd be the stopping point with it but it's thick right here we could go all the way through there with it we may try that we'll see how this does but this is pretty big this is a lot bigger than it was and without having a stroker motor i don't want to make it bog so we'll try this maybe i'll get another one out of the junkyard and we'll bore it out completely and lay the butterfly down some more to get um a bigger bore because it's in about a 45 degree angle right there all right now I promise putting it on the jeep idling decent a good bit I gotta get out here and clean her up I should have cleaned her before I took that off there look at it I've been slacking boys had a lot going on but uh it's getting better around here now I'm gonna we'll finish that Mustang up next weekend we'll be done with that then we can get back on this I want to make some bump stops for this too But let's go inside and talk, walk and talk. The, um, here, let me turn you off for a minute. Well, it all worked. The jig worked. Boring it out worked. Probably could have bored it bigger, but stock 4.0, you might not want to take it too big. You'll, it'll start bogging on you. But um, I may get a few of them out of the junkyard and um, bore them out give them away to you guys for gifts for the channel maybe we'll do that we'll get a couple of them and uh, at least two and bore them out and um, have them for you guys but um, we will see on that deal 
I think I got one. I think I got one more I know of for sure. I got one more. At uh, Damien's house, we took off that blowed up motor. But she all worked good, man. It wasn't that bad of a deal. Took longer to make the jig and uh, some weird aluminum. I thought it was like cast or something, but it's, it is casted, but it's pretty good stuff. It's like the chips are different than uh, than that 6060 stuff. See how they're like bendable? It's, almost, it's probably hardened just what it is from all the heat from the engine. Hardens the aluminum. Work hardens it, what they call it. Anyway, I guess that's it guys for the weekend. I'm going to clean up my mess. Um, And uh, we go on a trail ride or something tonight or tomorrow or whatever. I'll make a video on that. But uh, you guys take it easy and appreciate y'all watching and hanging out with me to do these deals. And uh, I'll see you on the next time. We'll figure something else out to do and uh, make a video on it. All right, y'all take it easy later.